everybody, John Brewer here. We're back for the last episode of Survival Exploration 201, where we're going to talk about the odds of finding an exploration ship. Since we started this series, Keen has released the source code to Space Engineers, which answers a lot of questions about how the world generator works. Before we get to that, though, let's check in with our intrepid band of explorers. Here we can see Marcus has finally located an exploration ship. In fact, he located three, two close together and one a ways off. One is a station, one is a fighter, and one is a massive Volus exploration ship. So how much space did we search to find these three? In total, across six expeditions, our group covered about 1.8 million meters linearly. Given that our view distance was 20 kilometers, that means that we searched roughly the equivalent of a cylinder 1.8 million meters long and 40 kilometers across. That's a volume of about 2.25 million cubic kilometers. Based on our observations, we see around 30 asteroids or asteroid clusters from any given point. So we have about one asteroid or asteroid cluster for every 1,100 cubic kilometers of space. So that means that we've scanned something like 2,000 asteroids, and we've found three exploration ships. Given our very limited data set, we can estimate that there's around one exploration ship for every 700 asteroids or so. That works out to about one exploration ship for every 75,000 cubic kilometers. 750,000 cubic kilometers translates to a sphere about 112 kilometers across, or an observation cylinder about 596 kilometers long. Based on our math, you'd need to fly nearly 600 kilometers with a camera, searching asteroids, to have a better than even chance of finding an exploration ship. But that's just based on our observations, and given the very small size of our sample, should be taken with a grain of salt. With access to the source code, however, we can take a look at what the real probabilities are. Let's do that. So when Space Engineers generates an asteroid, it randomly chooses what kind of an asteroid it is. Like in counter probabilities, this is done as a sum of weights. For each asteroid the game generates, there are 800 chances the asteroid will be just a regular asteroid, 300 chances the asteroid will be a cluster of asteroids, and one chance of it being an exploration ship. That's one chance in 1101, or about 0.09%. But wait! Asteroid clusters increase the probability of an encounter. You see, every time an asteroid cluster is generated, there are 300 chances it will actually be an asteroid cluster, three chances it will be an exploration ship, and two chances that it will be multiple exploration ships. So really, the odds of finding at least one exploration ship at an asteroid cluster are about 1.64%. If we factor in the 300 chances in the 1101 of generating an asteroid cluster, we get a combined probability of any particular asteroid actually being at least one exploration ship of about 0.54%. That translates to about 1 in 185 asteroids being an encounter ship. Now it's important to remember that you're not guaranteed that if you search 185 asteroids you'll find an exploration ship. A useful rule of thumb is that anytime you have a chance of 1 in n objects being something, there's only about a 63.2% chance of you finding an object with that thing in n random objects. So if you search 185 asteroids, there's about a 63% chance of you finding an exploration ship. Now, we searched around 2,000 asteroids. Assuming the values in Space Engineers were the same back then as they are in the release code, we're 99.998% certain to have found an encounter ship in 2,000 asteroids. In fact, we got quite unlucky to have to search as many asteroids as we did. Our numbers suggest that we may have flown past at least one encounter without recognizing it perhaps a base on the far side of an asteroid. Of course, the chance of successfully detecting an exploration ship as you fly by is a probability we don't know, and we can't calculate that from the game's source code. For now, though, we've reached the end of our mission and our series. I'm going to be taking a break from Space Engineers for a bit. For more watching enjoyment, go subscribe to Craig Perko's channel. Craig was previously a guest presenter on this channel, and he's the author of the extremely popular X-Par Wedge Reactor and other items on the Steam Workshop. In the meantime, my series on the Hunters will continue, and I'll be back with a new series sometime this summer. Until then, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.